Hey y'all and welcome back to Carbon Scoring. You have come to the best place for action figures and comics history. And we've got another one of our Marvel Legends mystery boxes. For those of you that are new to the channel, I have been collecting Marvel Legends for 20 years since the very beginning of the run. And down in what I call my secret lounge, I have displayed what I consider to be the very best of the best the best of each team, the best makeup, the best individual figures. But what that means is, after 20 years of collecting figures, you have a bunch that you can't display. And they end up in plastic bins like this. And this is an opportunity for us to crack open a bin, go through it, discover some of the, the wonderful, maybe forgotten action figures that are inside. And this is gonna be a box that is completely full of X-Men figures. And we're talking about doing, as the season changes here, the fall of the X-Men. Going to spend our autumn together focusing on X-Men Marvel Legends. So to do that, we got to find some. So let's crack this box open and see exactly what we've got inside. <laughs> this is a box absolutely packed to the brim with X-Men figures from the entire history of the Marvel Legends line. And, you know, it looks like we've got some some extra stuff in here, too. Uh, obviously, we've got a Deadpool figure. Where is he? Yeah. Okay, so... Oh, man. So this is one of my import figures. So I'm trying to remember if this is a Mafex or a SH Figure Arts. Deadpool, but just a spectacular looking Deadpool figure. Really, really great sculpt and articulation that you only get with imports. Plus, look at all of these accessories. There must be 15 different hands in there. We've got at least two extra heads. Figma. So this is a, a Figma figure because they're kind enough to actually give you a little bag that I don't use. I just stuff it down in a Ziploc, but we will probably see this Deadpool figure being posed when we get to, to that part of X-Men's history. All right, that's a pretty great start. Looks like we've got another newer figure in a bag, and we do. This is the recently released retro card back Rogue figure with all of her accessories. And there's one accessory in here that I particularly love. So first of all, what a spectacular sculpt. I mean, that is absolutely Jim Lee's version of Rogue. Look at how much detail went into her hair and the way that it flows. So she's got a pretty tough look on her face. She's got her jacket. But the accessory that I love the most is that this figure came with the extra hand holding her glove. So she can actually have a bare hand where she can use her powers to touch you and take away your memories or any of your abilities while holding her glove in the other hand. That's gonna come in very handy as we display some figures as well. As you guys know, if you've watched any of my history videos, when we do the history of the action figures, when we combine their comic history with the history of the figure itself, we like to recreate some of the scenes from the comics, some of the famous covers and things along those lines. So having those little accessories makes all the difference for that. All right, so this is a wing of a Build-A-Figure. Let's save talk. You know what? I think I see her. Here we go. Yeah, this is nice. So this Build-A-Figure is danger. And this came from the incredible run on Astonishing X-Men that was written by Joss Whedon, famous for creating and writing Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and drawn by the incomparable John Cassidy. Uh, I am a huge fan of that run. Danger was kind of the big bad for the first series and then morphed into an ally as they moved forward. And Toy Biz, of course, was so willing to give us such incredible, or was this an early Hasbro? Let me make sure I give credit where credit is due. Let's see what that says. I think that may say, does that say 2007? If it does, then that would maybe be one of the very earliest Hasbro figures. Anyway, so awesome. And look at all of the detail that goes into this sculpt to perfectly recreate John Cassidy's artwork for this really not very used character 
but we get this incredible Build-A-Figure with it. Can't wait to get into more of that. Oh, speaking of incredible figures, this is one of the Brood. Now, these crazy alien worm buried in you things first appeared, I believe, during Chris Clare Claremont and Paul Smith's time on the X-Men, and then they had a really big comeback when Mark Silvestri was drawing the team. Oh, man, those are, gosh, I don't even really like holding this thing in my hand. It's so disgusting. But those brood aliens, man, oh, man, that is great. They they came out as a two-pack in, in Marvel Select. This actually may be one of that two-pack because I think there's also a brood queen uh, build-a-figure that, that existed as well. Oh, my gosh, there's so much good stuff. Oh, here we go. So, Cyclops. This is the Toy Biz Cyclops, probably one of the earliest Cyclopses. Absolutely faithful to Jim Lee's artwork and the costume that he created in the 90s. Has a sweet kind of turn on his optic blast effect with the fingers. But, of course, you can actually kind of bend the fingers a, a little bit there. Not, not a huge amount. Uh, but one of the things that I love about this Cyclops is, if you remember that in the very first issues of X-Men, Cyclops' nickname was Slim. They called him Slim Summers. And he has obviously, you know, buffed up and gotten, been drawn with more superheroic super proportions as time has gone on. But this figure still maintains that slim, you know, athletic, but slender build for Cyclops. Oh, that's great. That's good stuff. And right along those same lines, here is a very, very Jim Lee looking storm from the kind of X-Men blue and gold time period. Uh, they've more recently given us a, a white version, but this is an older Toy Biz figure. The cape has a really good flowing effect. You can see it's kind of attached at two points on her back and then at her wrists. So it really does flow as you move the figure, which works because she has such a flowing head sculpt and and a really beautiful facial sculpt for Aurora. This, that's a good figure as well. These figures were hard to get to stand up. I will admit that that's always a challenge with some of the older female figures. Here's another one of that guy. So this one, if it's not the figure, Figma figure, this may be either the Mafex or the SH figure arts, but this is another import Deadpool. And you can just see how, how really well done it is, how incredibly super articulated, but, but how subtle they're able to make the articulation with for the big guy right here this guy so you know who's the who's the coolest character in comics this guy there we go deadpool that i believe it looks like ice it could be the base to iceman or the base to storm i can't remember which one but since we're talking about iceman here is another early early Iceman figure. You know, this has, I think, the same shoulders that the uh, the snapshot Peter Parker, the snapshot Spider-Man has with kind of the big uh, lats there. I, I don't love that look because it just makes it so wide across the shoulders. But what I do love is the frost effect that they managed to get on this Iceman figure. I mean, look at how terrific that paint app is to really give him. It's not just you know, blue plastic or translucent plastic. It actually, the plastic is translucent, but there's so much of that just frosting that you don't see it that way. So that's that's a really solid Iceman. Actually, I think it's the same buck that they did the very first Silver Surfer off of, which works. I mean, that that makes sense for both, for both characters, for sure. God, you know, I guess we're going to run into about a million of him in here, but here is another Deadpool. He's wearing, I suppose, his... X-Men class uniform. Uh, I'm sure we'll see more of him as we go along. Now, there's going to be some customs because it took a long, long time for Allison Blair uh, Dazzler to be made into an actual action figure. And so I had gotten this custom off of eBay many, many years ago. From a distance, it actually is a pretty decent looking figure. I mean, it's a pretty accurate representation of Allison, when she was on the X-Men during the, the Aboriginal team, when they were lost out in the, the outback of Australia, when you get a little closer, you can see, you know, it breaks down a little bit over time, particularly because this is a, a much older custom figure, but still very nice. Uh, doesn't replace the beautiful one that we got recently from Hasbro, but still a nice figure. 
Uh, here's one that still warrants a little bit of love. This is the early Toy Biz Psylocke. And I think I still particularly like that head sculpt. You know, that's still, I think, a very, very good portrayal of Psylocke. You know, she has some of the wonky Toy Biz early articulation issues, particularly with those hips. But, you know, really well done hair, great highlighting. Toy Biz always did a great job with highlighting in their, in their paint apps. Uh, but nice Psylocke figure there. Here's another custom. Um, it's a custom gladiator and really solid. I mean, if, if you, if you don't look too closely, that looks almost exactly like the Marvel Legends gladiator that, that we got not too long ago, but whoever made this did a terrific job with the Mohawk. I mean, that thing is absolutely beasty and good buck. Really nice choice. So for a long time, that was in my collection as, as gladiator. Uh, let's go here. God, it just keeps getting better and better and better. This is maybe one of the greatest sculpts that Toy Biz had. And truthfully, I still use the non-Lab Coat Beast in my X-Men display. Because even though that newer Beast is a terrific figure in and of its own right, this one just hasn't been topped. So this Beast, I believe, came in a four-pack because this obviously is the one that came with the Lab Coat. But it's all about this head sculpt. I mean, look at how incredible that is. And of course, he's got a little bit of articulation at the jaw so you can get him into some yelling poses. He's got articulated fingers, which is always an added bonus when you're wanting to do some incredible posing. He, he does have some kind of unique articulation at the hips. You can see how there's cuts and slices and bends. But what that does is it really allows him to get into those classic crouched positions that Beast is known for. And then, you know, just really the sculpt everywhere. I mean, a unique sculpt. He has that patch of fur that was on there. He's got the great X-Men belt. This was a piece of art, I, I'm telling you. And if we can see what year this came out, maybe we can, maybe we can't. But this is relatively early in the Marvel Legends line for them to hit such a home run like this character, just truly crushing it. Here is, okay, here we go. So I have been pretty hard on this in previous videos, but there are going to be, there's going to be all five figures of the original X-Men in what are supposed to be their original X-Men outfits. And I actually do not prefer these to the Toy Biz box set that came out in like either 1995 or 1997. That's why they're down here in the box. But we'll go through them all. And as we go through X-Men history, these will probably come in very handy for some posing of the X-Men in their original outfits. So here's Cyclops. Already, this Cyclops is on too big of a, of a buck. You know, this Cyclops, as I mentioned, looks slimmer. That's what this guy should look like. He, You know, if we're talking about... Cyclops from the first 38 issues of the X-Men, when they were wearing these school colors, he should be a much thinner character. Uh, good old Deadpool leaving his stuff laying around, just like you would expect. I haven't talked about this guy yet. <laughs> hey, here we go. Wolverine. So that's definitely the X-Force Wolverine head. I'm, I, you know, somebody can tell me in the comments, I'm actually not familiar with exactly what what from the comics this came from. I'm sure that there was a very specific storyline that had X-Men that had Wolverine in this particular costume, but still a pretty sweet figure. Here's a great one. And certainly one that I know makes a lot of lists for figures that we need to have redone. But I must say, I think they got it right the first time. This is Toy Biz's version of Longshot that 1980s heartthrob that tended to steal the hearts of multiple X-Men, but most particularly Dazzler during their time in the Outback together. He comes with his uh, little throwing blades there. But most importantly, Longshot debuted in a miniseries that was drawn by Art Adams, who is one of the greater artists in all of comic history, but he had such a unique style and he gave him this unbelievably classic Bon Jovi-esque 1980s mullet. And look at how the sculptors at Toy Biz made this bad boy flow. I mean, he has got the full, you know, right down the middle split. 
with just those flowing blonde locks. You know, they may make a bet another long shot figure. I don't know that they're going to make a better one. Just so good. Such a great figure. All right, here is the second of our five members of the original X-Men. This is Jean Grey, Marvel Girl. And again, this came from a five-piece box set. And we'll see the other three as we go along. This does not appear to be a Marvel Legends figure. And part of the reason why I know is because I clearly just ripped it right out of the package and threw it in the box. But this is going to be a Marvel Select cable. So this figure is going to be more in the 7-inch scale, whereas Marvel Legends are more in the 6-inch scale. But they really did go all out on the Rob Liefeld 90s fanny pack, blaster, pockets, pouches, giant guns coming off, huge thing on his hip. I mean, look at look at his head compared to all the gear that he's wearing. I mean, he obviously has to, you know that he's a superhero because a regular human could not stand with all of this crap weighing them down. Anyway, but nice, nice job on the sculpt. I mean, look, we got individual belt buckles painted on there. Each of the little accessories come in. They've got nice washes to give a 3D effect across all of these pouches. That's a really well done figure. Now, thankfully, we've gotten really well done cables in Marvel Legends, so I don't really have a spot for this guy in my display, but still really, really good. Okay, dropping back to the 90s. Again, this is a figure that we have gotten a, a new version of, but I dare say that head sculpt on Gambit still hasn't been topped. And I love the cloth trench coat that he comes with. Just so good. And, you know, one of the other things is Toy Biz did have these thinner, thinner male bodies. So there are some guys in the comics universe who don't look like Hulk Hogan, you know, who are not, they're not all built like Captain America. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that they have some different body frames to allow for, you know, fit, athletic, more gymnast type action figure bodies. But look at the smirk on on Gambit there. I mean, you know that that Cajun is up to trouble with that smirk. It's just a beautiful action figure. Okay, so this is in the box. So can barely even get it in the frame. This is the Build-A-Figure Apocalypse. Holy cow. Look at how great this monstrosity is. I do not remember what year this came out. Actually, this is going to help us. 2006. So this was still during Toy Biz's run on the line. They had the, the line until 2007 when um, Hasbro took over. But you're talking about... What is that, 13, 14 inches tall? I mean, this was part of that run of unbelievably huge Build-A-Figures that included Galactus and the Sentinels. And here is this just mammoth, mammoth apocalypse. Gonna have to figure out a way how to get this bad boy down in my display because that is definitely worthy of not being shoved in a box and being out with some of the greatest action figures that have been produced. You know, Toy Biz originated the whole concept of build a figures and I get that it was a way to try to make sure that you didn't have any peg warmers that all the different figures from a particular wave would sell through and hey good on them that's a great idea <clears throat> but what it meant for collectors is we got things like this that we would never ever have gotten any other way phenomenal absolutely mammoth figure Oh, another one where, yes, there are newer versions, but I don't know that we've gotten anything more accurate than this 90s Bishop character. So, again, big hulking body, just like he's supposed to have as he comes from a, a distant future where mutants were branded. And you can see his M brand right there over the top of his uh, right eyebrow across his face came with a pretty sweet, excellent shotgun that fits right nicely into the holster. That's always a good thing. He's actually got a second huge like laser blaster thing that fits into that holster. That is a great, great figure. And look at all of the detail that went into not only the sculpt, but the paint apps. I mean, those are tight little yellow lines. That is not an easy thing to accomplish on a figure this size. Even like this kind of watch area here with the with the latch is just perfectly painted 
but then that head sculpt matches the artwork of Mark Silvestri and the people who were working on X-Men in the 90s. Beautiful figure. God, this is a good box, y'all. There's so much good stuff in here. Here is another version of that storm that we saw earlier. Yeah, here we go. Here is uh, Wolverine's pseudo-daughter, uh, Laura. And this one, this is a little bit later. The very first figure actually came with claws that would, a uh, single claw that would detach out of her foot. She just, this is the X-Force version, I believe, and she just has the two claws up top. But she looks really good with the other X-Force team members. Nice. Ah, the one of the other Summers brothers. There's a, a lot going on in that Summers family tree that tends to change from time to time. But this is Alex Summers, Havoc. And this look is much more reminiscent of when he was leading the Uncanny Avengers, which after the House of M storyline, there was like a combined team of Avengers and X-Men and Havoc ended up being the leader. It's cool. I mean, it's cool that we got it. I definitely like the classic Havoc design much better. And that's the one that's on display in the Secret Lounge, but still pretty sweet that, you know, Alex Summers actually ends up with multiple figures. But, you know, they took the original design of his of his uh, mask and kind of made it a little bit more modern, but that's good stuff. Oh, here you are again. Deadpool. Looks like we're never going to be able to get rid of Deadpool. There's going to be a million of him in here. Now we're talking one of the absolute best written characters in comics, Kitty Pride. And this Kitty Pride came from that same storyline that we saw Danger, the huge Build-A-Figure that we started this box with. Uh, this is this is from Astonishing X-Men. So this is based off of the John Cassidy artwork. You can see on her wrist, she has a little place for uh, Lockjaw, her pet dragon, to land. And hopefully he's down in the bottom of this. Uh, unfortunately, this suffers from Toy Biz neck. It's got a little bit of that funky neck. And and that Kitty Pride may be a little bit older looking. I mean, she was an adult during this series. Uh, was she ever? We'll, we'll, we can maybe talk about that later. But uh, Kitty Pride, one of my utter favorite X-Men for sure. Here's another big Build-A-Figure. We got the Onslaught Build-A-Figure. Um, I got to go back and kind of read this story. I actually am not as familiar with it as probably many of you are, particularly my diehard X-Men fans out there. But again, give me a break. Look at what they put into this thing. I mean, and let me tell you something. It's heavy. Like, there's a lot of plastic. There is a lot going on to create a figure of this size. 2006. So this, again, would have been one of the very last of the Toy Biz Build-A-Figures. And you talk about going out with a bang. I mean, every finger is articulated on both hands. I mean, sculpted all the way down. And again, these sculpts cannot be used for anything else. It's not like you were going to get any more mileage out of this sculpt. This is it. This is what you were getting. Oh, that's great. That's so terrific. Here we go. Oh, his legs are broken. So, <laughs> Professor X, the one from the Toy Biz run. And, you know, we've, we've gotten several. We've gotten the hover chair. I prefer wheelchair Professor X. And this is him, you know, nice. He's actually just a really good suited body, but a very, very, I think, comic accurate look. We're so used now to seeing Patrick Stewart as Professor X that we just sort of assume that's what he looks like because Patrick Stewart absolutely captured Professor X so well. But that's really what I think of when I think of comic Professor X. Here's another Iceman. And I like this because instead of just come, whoops, slipperies, because he's Iceman, right? Um, again, they did a nice job with the frosting. They give it that blue, I think a more unique head sculpt for Bobby Drake. And of course, he's got the belt. So instead of just being kind of a generic figure that's painted to look frosty, he actually has something that makes him a member of the X-Men. So that's pretty sweet. This, this is the newer Omega Red, right? I think so. I think this is the one that, that came out more recently. Um, the Toy Biz did an Omega Red, uh, but this, I believe, is the Hasbro version. I don't necessarily prefer this newer one. I think I maybe have the older one in my display just because I kind of liked it better. I maybe like the paint apps better. But that's from Jim Lee's run 
on on uh, adjectiveless X Men, where he restarted the book to the tune of eight million comic books in sales. Not so bad. All right, so the, I mean, he doesn't even want to focus on the screen. This, I believe, is the Iceman that came with the, the five-pack. So this is meant to be original X-Men Iceman. One of the biggest drawbacks is he's not wearing the boots. When Bobby Drake first appeared, when the X-Men first started and they all had on matching outfits, yes, Iceman looked like a giant snowman, but he actually had on his team boots. So that's kind of a miss uh, on that. One more reason why I prefer the 1995 Toy Biz X-Men, original X-Men 5-pack compared to this newer one. Magneto, in one of his various incarnations, uh, kind of cool, he's got some Magneto power hands going on. Uh, I do not know specifically what version of Magneto this is meant to be, but it's, a, it's still a decent looking figure. Uh, this is a newer Psylocke, but this is a Marvel Select Psylocke, so you can tell she's bigger, she's more of the seven inch scale, whereas that first Psylocke that we looked at, much more six inch scale. You know, it's a it's a newer figure, so a little bit of a newer sculpt, a newer design, a little bit different hair, still got nice highlights and whatnot. You know, really good base figures. Just some of these are hard, particularly for the female figures. It's hard to work those into your Marvel Legends display. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay. <laughs> Here's some more brood. Now, this brood, I'm fairly certain, came from the 5-inch line, from the X-Men animated series line. And, oh, uh, look at that. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yes! Oh, that is so disgusting. So he has a little button on his back. And I think the wings, oh, the wings flap as well, if you could see that. Oh, God, that's horrifying. These things, if you didn't read those original comics as a kid, you have no idea how many nightmares the brood could provide for you. Oh, so gross. I love it. Uh, Nemesis, right? Isn't this the top part of Nemesis? Hopefully the rest of him is in another X-Men box. Be ashamed to lose that. We got angel wings everywhere. We'll see where those go. We'll pull those out. Actually, why don't we look right now? So here is uh, Toy Biz's version of Angel. So he has his red costume on. This, I think, was the main release, was in the red costume. Toy Biz also gave us these, these kind of cool stands. So for like 10 bucks, you got a comic book, a stand, a Build-A-Figure part, and one of the original X-Men in their newer costume with a very nicely dedicated head sculpt that captures Angel's uh, newer mask. And, of course, he's got these utterly great wings that fit right on to these pegs in the back. And, you know, the nice thing here, they actually, they're pretty snug, even after all this time. Look at how huge that is. I mean, just, just excellent. And there is a ton of detail sculpted. I mean, there are individual feathers carved out of each of these wings. I mean, just, and even look at how much detail is in the top part of the wing. I mean, it gives it such incredible texture and life. That is a beautiful, beautiful action figure and really shows the care, the dedication. Look at how they're shaded at the tips. That's not just the camera light doing that. That's that's actual paint apps on these wings to give this the most realistic texture possible. You know, if, uh, if Jesse Falcon or any of the original Toy Biz guys are watching these videos, I just continue to tip my cap to the love that y'all put into these figures because Hasbro does too. Make make no mistake, these new Hasbro figures have upped the game. They have taken things to another level, but that level got established by what was done in the early 2000s by Toy Biz. Beautiful stuff. That's somebody's cape. Here's another uh, Marvel Select um, Nightcrawler, obviously. Uh, you know, hard to... They, Marvel Select really focuses on sculpt a little more than articulation, but with a figure like Nightcrawler, it's really kind of all about articulation, right? And so kind of takes second place there. Although if that's like a Banff um, base, could probably use that with my other Nightcrawler to have him, you know, giving his teleportation thing. Thankfully, that does not smell like sulfur, the way that Nightcrawler's Banff smells in the comics. 
I love this figure so much. I have two of them, and I'm not going to apologize for that at all. Oh, here's one of our most famous X-Men figures. Um, if you're not familiar with X-Men lore, then you know that secretly one of the... I'm just kidding. I have no idea why Silver Surfer is in this box. This looks like it's a, a Diamond Select Silver Surfer. We'll have to find him another home. No problem. Sorry, Norrin. We'll get you where you need to be. And another one of Toy Biz's, you know, early masterpieces, this mammoth Colossus figure. You know, it just, the the metallic look. The, again, they did such a great job with paint apps. But look at the, look at how chiseled his cheeks are and that that haircut that just perfectly captures the comics look. I mean, he is a big big figure but they spared no details on the boots on on the costume they've sculpted out all this you know metallic steel armor you know body that he that he's created you know terrific we, again we've been so blessed we've gotten numerous good colossus figures but that one certainly started things off with a bang that is part of a shield mandroid so, again, shouldn't be in the X-Men box, nor should Rocket. What are you doing, Rocket? You're not supposed to be in here. Oh, <laughs> now we're getting really crazy. Okay, Lion-O, uh, also from an alternate X-Men universe. Let's get him out of the way. And the same thing with, uh, guys, at Grim Reaper. I can't remember, but uh, that, that one. Although, that's awesome. Look how awesome that is. Okay, get out of there. Get out of there. You're not supposed to be there. All right, here's some more parts to our Build-A-Figure. Hopefully, the rest of that will turn up. Yep, nope, wrong, wrong box. Yeah, now we're talking about articulation. So this is the original Nightcrawler, the, the first one from Toy Biz. Again, let's see if we can catch a year. It's going to be pretty early. I'm betting like 2004 or so. Can't see. Getting too old, can't see that. But this one just... First of all, I think that's a great head sculpt for Kurt. Um, but it's all about, look, the fingers are articulated. You can get him into serious, twisty Nightcrawler poses. Th look at how far back you can get these, these knees to bend with those double-jointed knees. He's got good kind of double, double articulation at the waist and, perhaps most importantly, a poseable tail. So you can get that tail to twist around, to be in all of those really cool nightcrawler-ish poses. So good. Again, one that was that was done right the first time. Excellent. Nightcrawler. And it looks like we're down to a few bad guys here. Uh, we have a really swell Magneto figure. Um, this is not the first Magneto. This one, uh, even though it's it's got the bendy hands, I don't think I remember the the chest plate armor being quite that pronounced. I mean, it does actually look like it's still on the original Iron Man body that came out in the very first wave of Marvel Legends, so maybe it is, but again, very nice head sculpt. Kind of reminiscent of what Jack Kirby was doing, but uh, really, really good. Classic Magneto. I don't think I see his helmet in this box, but we'll, but we'll find it eventually. And Mr. Sinister. Another great figure. Look at, look at, again, with this, it's, Look at how much goes into this cape to create. And this is painted. Like, it has highlighted texture on this cape. I mean, again, that's the level of detail that we're talking about. Even his uh, hoodie thing here has, has transitioned fade to give it more depth. So, terrific, terrific, Mr. Sinister. We've got a red skull-bodied Armanzola build-a-figure part, as well as, you know, something from the Monsters uh, 5 set. Actually, probably need to keep that out. This is the wings that came with the 5-pack Angel, the Angel that came with these figures. We only found uh, Jean Grey and Scott Summers. We didn't see, and maybe Iceman. But when I'm talking about the difference that has gone on. These are the wings that came with that five pack angel. Okay. See them. These are the wings that came with a single packed angel figure earlier in the run. Can, can you see a difference? Anybody? Can you, can you tell a difference there? That's, that's why I'm just so in love with some of these older figures. Now this, this thing's heavy. It's hard to pose, but it, when you get it posed, it is so worth it. So, this is the first of our uh, 
Oh, I think that's the head that goes in that Nemesis thing. This is the uh, the first of our Marvel Legends boxes here of the X-Men. Welcome to the Fall of the Mutants. There's going to be even more incredible action coming up. So thanks for watching. Subscribe to Carbon Scoring. If you're not already a subscriber, if you are, keep watching lots and lots of more videos, and we'll keep cranking out good stuff for you. Thanks, guys.